be very penetrating and cold. That's what black magicians develop. If we use the heart, though, we can move that clairvoyance to a much higher level. That's not just looking into people's weaknesses or how we can manipulate them, which can be done clairvoyantly, but actually looking into the soul nature of the person. What is the divine core of that person? Even if the person's acting out in a way that we can't stand them, we can try to look past that to see there's a divine core in this person, and we ask ourselves the grail question of, brother or sister, what ails thee? You went through some type of suffering to be able to manifest yourself in this non-skillful way in the world that I find difficult to interact with. But it's based on suffering. That's why the Buddhists talk about, you know, all life is suffering, everyone has suffered. The only way to get past anger and to forgive your enemies is to understand that your enemies suffer too. And so, at this stage, the illumination of the heart really comes into play. There's other aspects as well. Five, at this stage, you would have in classical text where a person is called so-and-so the Greek, so-and-so the Persian, so-and-so uh, the Samaritan. And what's hidden behind that is that at this stage, the person is actually becoming a representative of their people, of their tribe, of their group. And so they can actually represent what is good in the cultural impulse of that entire group of people. And those are the kind of people you always wanted to lead your group in ancient times. And so it always used to be that the person that was the oldest and the most spiritually illuminated led the country. Then it became a big political thing, but <laughs> classical times, that was the ideal. Then the sixth stage was that of the sun hero. The sun hero you find in many ancient texts described, and this is the point where the person is literally connecting to the forces of the sun. Now again, in early Christianity, it was understood that the nature of the sun, S-U-N, and the sun, S-O-N, and the, and the idea of the Christ, is no different because the physical sun up in the sky as a manifest body in our solar system has the same relationship to the ocean of fire that is the Godhead as the seeing the Godhead as a quote-unquote father has to him having a child that is a son. In other words, the sun up in the sky is an emanation at a more macrocosmic level from the unified Godhead. And so at the level of the sun hero, we are moving our consciousness up to what we would think of as Christ consciousness, transpersonal consciousness, beyond our people, beyond ourselves, beyond our people, to actually taking in the whole of humanity until finally it moves up to the stage called in the Western uh, terms later, the Father, which is the foundation of all creation. What the Buddhists talk about all sentient beings. I will continue to incarnate to aid all sentient beings until they attain enlightenment. So this is the way it was described classically as the stages one goes through. And we can see that within this, this is really a way of depicting a transformation of consciousness from one level to the next. Now there are seven Rosicrucian stages of higher knowledge. So I want to contrast these a little bit. They're connected, but they're seen a little bit differently as things change over time. The first stage in the Rosicrucian way is the study of spiritual science. Now there's something hidden here. Why is the first stage the study of spiritual science? Now we're not talking about something clairvoyant here. We're talking about literally studying spiritual text. First part of it is to develop our capacity to think logically. Now in most spiritual circles today, in Western metaphysics, we look at things that are intellectual or logical as somehow lower than things that are spiritual. But that was not how it was understood in the original traditions. They understood the capacity to think logically as a superpower that would allow you to completely transform nature and to use all the forces of nature. And that's what it's done. We're harnessing the forces of nature more and more through the capacity to think logically. Also, the capacity to think logically allows us to become self-aware to a deeper level and to guide our own lives. So if you can't think logically, how can you act without a guru? You'd have to have a guru to tell you what to do, like when you're one year old and you need a parent to show you what direction to go. You have to be able to think logically and evaluate. So the study of spiritual science is connected to this, to actually get a framework. You have to have a context to understand things. If you don't have a context, you can't possibly evaluate what's going to be my best option to do in this situation. You have to know what your choices are and the whole context they fit in. But there's something else hidden behind it. And what's hidden behind it at the deeper level, when you take off one of the veils, is that the study of spiritual science allows you to put into your mind an understanding of a particular structure. Any pattern is related to sacred geometry. That pattern is related to the mind of God. So 
as a practical matter, when you study spiritual science, you understand different levels of consciousness, different spiritual planes, different human subtle bodies, the evolution over great periods of time. Those actually put a structure in your consciousness that allow higher spiritual beings to tell you more. It's like if you had to run up on somebody and you're trained in physics and they're not, and you're going to tell them something that they can do that would really help people. You can have a hard time trying to find the words about, okay, now you got to do this and that, if they don't know the concepts. It's the same thing here. Higher spiritual beings can give us information about what we need to do with our lives to help other people, all kinds of great processes. If we have the core concepts to begin with that they can work with, otherwise it's really hard to communicate with us in a way that moves up to their level. So the study of spiritual science is to actually lay down contextual foundations in our thinking, in our mind, that these spiritual beings can then come in and when we're meditating or we're relaxed, all of a sudden things start to click internally. We get these downloads that happen in a second. We're going to see how all these things fit together. But we can't have it without having the things planted in place first, without having the context first. So it's not just an intellectual thing, it lays the foundation for the spiritual beings to come and show us how it all fits together and how we can apply it. Second stage is called acquiring imaginative knowledge. This is referred to as imagination with a capital I by the Rosicrucians. At this stage we begin to develop a clairvoyant perception that's related to the faculty of sight. So we can actually perceive things in the non-physical world in a way that is spiritually similar to in the physical world, if you say somebody is visual or auditory or kinesthetic, so one person primarily processes information through the eyes, they're visual, through the ears, they're auditory, through feeling, they're kinesthetic. The exact same thing is true spiritually. Some people will process the clairvoyance primarily through a type of internal sight, and they see all these images on their mental screen. A lot of those images are not actually present in the spiritual world, but they're how they clothe non-physical realities so they can access it and they can work with it. And so that's the imagination stage. We can now see non-physical realities in the mind's eye. We can't see with the physical eyes that there's an angelic being in front of us, but in the mind's eye we can begin to perceive that form. We might clothe it in different ways. If I'm a Tibetan, I might see it as a blue-skinned being above the floor with this radiance of light, etc. And if I'm a Christian Jew Muslim, I might see it as a great being of light with these huge wings and maybe if it's a higher hierarchy, instead of two wings it has six wings like the seraphim or whatever it might be. But it's a way to represent seeing these non-physical forces. The next stage is reading the occult script. And without going into the depths of this, we can say that this is another type of clairvoyant perception that the Rosicrucians call inspiration with a capital I. This is a type of spiritual hearing. This is what is classically called uh, basically hearing the tones of the universe, hearing these great cosmic symphonies around us all the time, hearing the symphony of the spheres. And so with this, we are able to understand higher realities through tones. So people that are musicians or really like music, you know that if you watch a movie, depending on the soundtrack, the exact same scene is a tragedy or a comedy, depending on the sound. It tells you what the emotional content is. And the same thing is true here. Rather than seeing a visual image of a being, one would hear a tone coming from the being, and the tone would give you a quality of the being's internal nature. Everything tones and resounds musically in a great harmony. And we also, of course, do this all the time in our daily life when you hear somebody's voice. People's voices have a tone. That tone carries a part of their intrinsic spiritual nature. And then what was called living into the spiritual environment. And this is also known by the Rosicrucians as intuition with a capital I. This intuition is the ability to actually uh, feel and interact with higher spiritual realities through how things feel internally. And so it's like a kinesthetic person. They have to feel something. They have to touch it. Now this stage is something that actually allows us, you see that this is actually at a deeper stage than the imagination stage, seeing the image. Because as we go into higher and higher planes, we're going to have some of these levels drop away. And so to give you an example of that, as we go to what we call the astral plane, the astral plane is